PowerPoint becomes a good friend <laughs> if you do it properly. Um, to innovate or not to innovate, that is not the question. The question is how to innovate and how fast to innovate today. It really is not a choice. Also, how to innovate. Um, companies innovate in many different ways. Innovation in different organizations happens uh, in, in tremendously different ways. But I believe that um, there are some elements which are common to innovation in all companies. And um, here's a model. You draw a triangle, you draw a square, and you draw a pentagon. The triangle represents the sources of any purposefully creative act. It's a triangle, so there are three sources. And these are talent, energy, and method. When I say talent, I am not thinking about Picasso and Einstein, I am thinking about you and me. Uh, everybody has creative talent. I don't want to go into the research, but I'm happy to discuss it with you anytime you like. All human beings have creative skills. We, have diff we use them in different ways. We have different levels of creative skills, but we all have talent. The second one is energy. And again, I'm not using the word in the Einsteinian sense. Energy is the personal resources we devote to an issue. It's determination and it is time. Unfortunately, we need time to be creative. I wish we could be creative in zero time, but we can't. And finally, method. Um, what does method do? We, uh, method makes creativity more efficient. Method helps develop the talent. Method helps channel the energy in uh, purposeful direction. So think of, uh, there are many creative methods around. Uh, there's a creative problem solving model by Osborne and Parnes. There's De Bono's uh, method of uh, six uh, thinking hats. And there's more out there. Method makes creativity more efficient. So that's the source of creativity. Then there's the square. The square represents structure the organized context in which innovation happens. Uh, remember, we're talking about organizations here. We're not talking about a uh, man who is sitting on a rock, a man or a woman who's sitting on a rock looking at the waves writing beautiful poetry. That's creativity too, but we're talking about creativity in organizations. So the structure, if you like, is represented by four elements. Two of them are human, individual and team. And the other two are more about process, they're about target and system. Um, the individual is very important for an organization. And if there is one piece of advice, it's to connect people with their passion. I believe that is um, one of the leader's most important missions. Because we will all uh, apply our creativity much more for forcefully, much with much more value in areas that we love. Team, not many individuals will make a team. There is no innovation that really happens as a solo act. Innovation is not a solo act. It happens in teams, even if great ideas come from individuals, in the end, it's realized in teams. And there are bad teams, there are good teams, and innovative teams. And organizations have to figure out how to get from good to innovative. Then there's target. Target is what gives meaning to our innovation. 
is our innovation like Google, where, like Google search engines, where we've made a very big, where we've invented a completely new industry? Is it more like uh, the body shop or Ikea, where we're doing cosmetics or furniture, but we're doing them in a very different and a very disruptive way? Or is it like Kaizen? Is it continuous improvement, which is the methodology, or if you like, the, the uh, target of uh, most of Toyota's innovation? It comes from the Japanese word Kaizen, continuous improvement. It is not useful for a leader to tell people, I want you to be more creative. It is more useful to say, this is what our innovation is all about. And this is usually, um, it usually takes time to be able to define it at a general level and then at more specific levels. And finally, the system. System is what delivers your innovation target and there are lots and lots and lots of different systems available to organizations today. Now, all this is great, but if you don't have the culture, which is represented by the Pentagon, you are wasting your time and money. And culture is about behaviors, it's about norms, uh, it's about the values within, in, uh, within which innovation thrives. It's a Pentagon, there are five of them, ideas, freedom, engagement, humor, and risk. Ideas, in an innovative company, we simply love ideas. We love ideas, we recognize that we need many to get one good one, and we recognize that ideas are valuable. If you go to your boss and say, I've got this great new idea, and your boss says, go away, do the budget, this is not the right culture for innovation to thrive. Then there's freedom. What does freedom mean? Freedom is never absolute. Within an organization, we need to be as free as possible. As free as possible. Now, innovation, creativity uh, can happen under very difficult circumstances, not under very restrictive circumstances as well. But we need that openness. We need that debate of different points of views. We need to be free to do that if innovation is to thrive in the organization. Then there's engagement, um, and I feel that the word motivation is a little bit of a tired word, so I prefer to use the word engagement. It's the unwritten contract between the company and the individual to help each other grow. So I am helping my organization grow, develop in the way it wishes to develop, and they are helping me grow and progress as a person. If they do that, then I will more generously give my creativity to this organization. Um, the next one is humor. Dr. De Bono spoke about humor. Humor is in fact very close. Uh, it, it is in fact creativity because it's all about seeing things from a different point of view. Here's a good one. You know it's going to be a bad day when your partner wakes you up in the morning and says, good morning, Pat, but your name is Chris. <laughs> um, so it's this being able to see things from different points of views that is very important. And we have a great Swedish re researcher called Joran Ekeval, who actually found in his own researches that companies that were more innovative were also more, there was also more humor and more play in those companies. And then there's a bad news. There's risk. Innovation is really impossible without risk because innovation is change. Big innovation, bigger risk, small innovation, small risk. So I'm not saying let's do anything silly, but let's find ways in our companies to come to terms with mistakes and to come to terms with failure. If we don't learn to do that, then we will have people who write memos to cover themselves and do nothing because it might be risk. And risk is um, an organizational risk, but it is also a personal risk. We need people who are ready to take these personal risks. 
And if you like, it is a multidimensional issue. Innovation happens when the sources of creativity are mobilized in an organized structure and within an appropriate culture. And it's a synthesis of all these elements that makes um, an organization more innovative. And as you can see, there are 12 of these elements. Before I finish, I'd like to go just for a moment to systems, um, all of these, uh, here you have 15 different systems, different ways of getting, of improving innovation, the innovative capacity of an organization, if you like. You can have staff suggestion schemes, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You can have open innovation with the clients, you can have financial incentives, you can have regular brainstorms. You can uh, teach people creative skills. You can organize your company with creative champions all over. So all of these are different systems. Now there is one that is better than the others. And I would like you to, let's discover this together. Can we do that? Please say yes. Yes. Yes, yes thank you. I would like you please to imagine you're pointing with your finger in one of these squares, any one of these squares. You're doing it as an individual, okay? Are you imagining that? Yeah. yeah, you're pointing to any one of these squares. And now I would ask you to move your finger up or down vertically and stop at any white square. Move your finger up, up or down and stop at any white square. Have you done that? Okay, now move your imaginary finger horizontally this time, left or right, and stop at any yellow square. Any yellow square. Are you there? Now move your finger diagonally. It gets a little bit more complicated. Diagonally, in any direction. And stop in any white square. Any white square. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Keep your finger there. Last time. Now move it once again vertically, up or down, and stop in any yellow square. Any yellow square. Are you there? Now, can we please all call it out together? Where are you now? What does it say? Design your own system. Right. And that is the best system. It's the one you design for yourself in your own organization. By all means, be inspired by other systems that exist around you. But in the end, you have to choose the one that will deliver your strategy yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Well, I only wish we had a bit more time for some of your magic. What would you do? Something quickly? No? Not possible? Please, if it's two seconds, go for it. Okay, but this takes a little bit of work. Can I ask you to stand up, please? All of you, please stand up. And um, Einstein once said, you could not solve a problem within the same framework as what created the problem. You can't, you can't solve a problem within the same framework as the one that created the problem. So let's put it to the test. Hold out your arms like this. Yes, now uh, put your, uh, cross your arms and put your palms to face each other, right? And clasp your hands like this and turn them inwards, inwards, like that, no, farther from your body, as far from your body as you can. Right? Now, raise the little finger of the left hand. Can you do that? And can you raise the third finger of the right hand like this? Great. Now, you have your left wrist in front of your right, you have your left wrist in front of your right wrist, right? Now, I want you, without unclasping your hands, to do like I do, to bring your right wrist in front. Watch like this. Do as I do. Okay. There you go. Ha, ha, you're having difficulties. Ha ha. Ha ha. Remember Einstein. Okay, I'll teach this to you. Let's do this once more. Hold down your arms like this. Cross them, palms facing each other, clasp your fingers. Bring them inside. No, no, farther from your body. And this is where I fool you. Because I come back in a different position. And I'm ready to do this. 
Jesus, but you didn't see it. Why didn't you see it? Because you can't solve a problem in the same context as the context in which it was created. Thank you very much.